Hey everyone, before the video begins, I want to let everyone know that I've started a Patreon account. Making these videos takes up pretty much all my time, and I'd love to remain doing this full time. So, I've started this Patreon account so that I don't have to worry about any finances and can stick to just pumping out content. Anyone who pledges to the account can get shoutouts at the end of my videos, as well as live commentary and raw footage of my runs so you can hear me rage in real time. Thank you to anyone who decides to support me, and let's start the video. Super Smash Bros. is one of my favorite franchises. It has my favorite characters from my favorite games, my favorite esports personalities, and the premise of beating up an almighty warlord with a secretary dog always makes me smile. With the release of Smash Ultimate, we were treated to a story mode, World of Light, which is based around unlocking new characters and spirits, which make the rest of the story mode easier to complete. But if you've been on this channel before, or, you know, read the title of this video, you know that I'm about to do neither of those things. Today we find out, can you beat World of Light without spirits and only using Kirby? The game starts off with the age old question, who would win in a fight? The greatest heroes in the entire universe? Or Kanye West's father stretch my hands and ultra light beams? With Yeezy being the ultimate life form, the heroes are all vanquished, except for the round mound of Flavortown, Kirby. Kirby is then yeeted to the beginning of the map. For anyone who doesn't know how World of Light's gameplay works, I'll sum it up quick. The map is kind of like a board game. As you progress through the map, you'll run into spirits that you'll need to fight in order to collect them and move on. The entire first quarter of this game is actually pretty easy. There's nothing too difficult in the early game because I'm still as powerful as the spirits that I'm fighting. I whoop the easy enemies, cut through Mushroom Land, and watch Pac-Man decide that life wasn't worth living. After beating Pac-Man, Galeem's shield gets weakened and he nuts a fireball onto a military base in retaliation. Before heading to the base though, I beat Leffen's crutch character and activate the green switch that'll unlock a future area. After that, I go and unlock Donkey Kong because he was needed for this run and definitely not because I was following Fuzziness's speedrun so I knew where to go on the map. Heading to the power plant is where things started to get challenging, and there's no better example of that than the fight against Shedinja. Ready? Go! Each sub area of the game has a basic premise. Solve a puzzle, beat a boss or mini boss, and move on. In the instance of the power plant, I needed to turn on the power to open up the next area. After turning on the power, I ran into my first actual challenge in the run, Victini. The Victini fight not only lets Incineroar have his final smash randomly, but it also makes me easier to launch, allowing him to one shot me like a high noon McCree. Leaving the power plant, I head to the new area, but not before fighting Hungrybox and his two girlfriends first. Cutting through the town isn't hard, and there isn't anything difficult in the area, but the spirit of Hal Emmerich is here, which I need to have in order to get to another area of the game. I coast through the fight and make my way to the pink switch, but not before fighting the melee boy himself. After giving Fox a taste of his own medicine and up tilting him to death, I hit the pink switch and make my way over to the remaining blue switch. I hit the final switch and make my way back to the military base, where Galeem originally shot his seed. The military base is another area full of basic fights and simple puzzles, and outside of a couple of annoying fights with Revolver Ocelot and Porygon, there wasn't a problem moving forward. Finishing the puzzle in the base unlocks the final area, where we meet the first boss in the run, Gallium and it's from this point onward that shit gets a little ridiculous. Without spirits to boost my attack power, Kirby becomes incredibly weak incredibly quickly. This Gundam looking asshat only needs two or three attacks to kill me, and boy does he love to spam. The boss fights in this run essentially become like Dark Souls. Learn the patterns, avoid getting hit at all, and get in attacks when you can. That's easier said than done though, because Gallium fights like a Wi-Fi Little Mac. He spams attacks almost non-stop, most of which can't be avoided in time for someone as slow as Kirby. And since I have no spirits, one attack breaks Kirby's shield. So if I can't dodge attacks in time, and I can't block them, what can I do? 
You will die. I got stomped, squished, punched, run over, shot at, and fell on. You name a body part, and Gallia managed to hit me with it. Even after beating him with an incredible run, I felt no joy. I knew it was only a sign of things to come, and boy did they come. Wait, what? After beating Gallium, Gleam, yes those are two different enemies, shields weaken, and a few areas of the map open up. I head towards the Temple of Light, but not before getting absolutely styled on by this Donkey Kong. Once I reach the Temple of Light, it's wash, rinse, repeat. Reach a new area, solve a puzzle, fight a few enemies, and face the mini boss. This area's mini boss was Pit, and even though I thought he'd be difficult, it turns out he didn't have the reeds. Moving on from there, I head to Bowser's castle. It was around this area that normal enemies were starting to overpower me, and I started needing two or three tries to win. Bowser's castle was by far the easiest area to get through. It felt like I was playing a beginner's first Super Mario Maker stage. Until, that is, I fought Giga Bowser. Giga Bowser was the hardest enemy I fought in this entire run. And the reasons are pretty obvious. The stage is tiny, Giga Bowser is a massive boss, I am a frail pink baby. I might as well put a blur over this footage, because what happens in this boss fight should be considered not safe for work. Bowser whooped my ass like I stole something. I legitimately could not do anything against this spiky turtle. Kirby has no range and needs to be very close for any attack to hit. Meanwhile, Bowser's attacks sometimes cover the entire stage, one shot kill me, and his body takes up half the stage at any given point in time. I tried fighting on the ground. No. I tried fighting in the air. No. I tried not fighting at all. No. I spent so long on this boss that I legitimately gave up and started an entirely new challenge run. Uh, coming soon by the way. When I finally came back, he whooped me again. I tried spamming him, cheesing him, making love to him, offering free promo, everything. But in the end, all I ever got was... <sighs> so, for the sake of the run, I had to swallow my pride. After that embarrassing display of skill, Galeem is weakened again, and I take my broken will to the final remaining boss area. As per usual, before I can head to the last boss area, I have to run through countless spirits. Now I'm at the level to where spirits are much stronger, and I have to go full 2000 M2K mode just to have a chance at winning. The fight against Orbulon frustrated me in particular. Fighting a Mewtwo with the power of Abadongo is hard enough, but fighting him while also getting shot by a heat-seeking electric missile that hits for 50%? I think Mighty Keef puts it best. Boy, that's just crazy. The remaining boss area requires me to go across a sea of water, so in order to do that, I head over and fight the Lapras Spirit, controlled by this NSYNC cover band, D-SYNC. I beat them, get Lapras, and head across the water. But before I can reach the new boss area, I fight my worst nightmare. The fight against Rick was some of the most painful torture my young hot body has ever experienced. The floor, Electric, Pikachu, spamming fire at me, Kirby, sucking me off. Nothing about this fight is fun. I legitimately almost quit the run entirely because of Rick the Hamster. I wanted nothing more than to go to the nearest pet store, buy a real hamster, and huck that bitch to the moon out of anger. But, in my most desperate hour, I remembered a strategy that always works. I cheesed him. And boy did it feel good. Beating Rick allowed me to go into the boss area, which in this case was Forest Hill, home of Raythalos. The puzzle here is that you have to push Raythalos in the right direction and corner him to start the boss fight. And I totally did that on the first try and didn't need any YouTube tutorial to help me. The fight against Raythalos is exactly what you'd expect by this point. Every boss is just way too beefy and one to two hits almost always gets Kirby annihilated. Raythalos is no exception. The worst part about the fight was when Raythalos took to the air. When it's flying, it's almost constantly moving, 
making it harder to hit and harder to read an attack. And this attack? This attack fucked me so many times against my will that I almost made a twit longer exposing it. Eventually, through sheer grit, determination, and my caffeine addiction, I managed to prevail against the foul beast. Kirby won, Raythalos, well it doesn't matter. Moving on. Beating Raythalos removes Galeem's shield entirely, allowing me to fight the light with all my might. Unfortunately, and expectedly, there's a metric shit ton of enemies in my way. None of the enemies here made me struggle too badly, but due to the power difference, I almost never win on my first attempt. Without spirits, Kirby is simply too weak. And remember when I got slippy toed earlier? Me neither, I didn't put it in the video. But good thing I got him, because he's needed to fly into space and ultimately reach Galeem. The enemies here are tough, but nothing worth talking about, except for a surprise visit from Master Hand. Anybody who's played Smash knows exactly who Master Hand is, and knows that this extremely pale boy loves to smother you in hot RNG kills when you least expect it. And that's exactly what he did. Like I said earlier, most bosses here are like Dark Souls. Simply read the attack and dodge. But Master Hand has so many attacks with so many different timings that you're almost guaranteed to get the roughest hand job of your life. But this challenge has strengthened my skill of the game and my knowledge of Kirby tech. Molding me into the best Kirby since... Who knows? Nobody even plays Kirby. On just my fourth attempt, I vanquish Master Hand and move on to the real villain, Galeem. Hey everybody, just a quick reminder to hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm really trying to make it to 50,000 subs this year and keep this as my full time job. Also, if you subscribe, you'll be invited to my birthday party where my mom said we could stay up all night playing Nazi zombies on the big screen TV. I recently learned that Galeem's full name is Galeem Abdul-Jabbar, because this thing dunked all over me. I said earlier that Giga Bowser was the hardest boss in this run. Well, Galeem really tried to challenge that idea. This thing has pretty easy to read moves and doesn't have a lot of attacks, but its power is unreal. One hit from anything, and I mean anything, and I will die. The thing that made this so excruciatingly painful was that, unlike Bowser, I kept getting so close to beating Galeem every time, only to die in the most random ways possible. And this is where I have some more embarrassing news. I actually changed the fight to very easy to see if I could beat it. And I could, but a little too easily. So, after beating it, I tried to reload the fight, thinking that I could just go back but the game autosaved. So, what should have been my greatest victory will forever remain stained, knowing that I can't go back. Anyway, who cares, let's move on. Beating Galeem creates some goth shit, because then the darkness comes out, in the form of a second villain named Darkon. Kirby gets teleported to the Dark Realm, and I'll need to repeat the process I did to get to Galeem in order to get to Darkon. The only difference is that the spirits here are way harder, to the point that it took me multiple recording sessions to get to each boss. The first boss I reached, Ganon, was probably the hardest of the three. Ganon has very easy to read moves, but has crazy range and power. We're talking some Men Men Ganondorf fusion shit. This move in particular was the bane of my existence. It comes out scary fast, and there isn't any sign of when he'll do it. But, the constant struggling had improved my skill, and I scraped out a win with my newfound pro player abilities. In between bosses, I also had to fight Master Hand's sassy boyfriend, Crazy Hand. Crazy Hand is surprisingly very easy. Almost all of his moves are very easy to dodge, and he spams the same moves often. Combine that with my elite smash Kirby, and Crazy Hand goes down first try. After Crazy Hand comes Dracula's Castle led by the Sultan of Suck himself. But before I speak on Dracula, I need to speak on his dumbass palindrome, Alucard. This spirit fight was harder than the boss. Seriously. Fighting Simon and assist trophy of Alucard was the equivalent of putting my naughty bits on an ice cube covered in salt. It seemed funny at first, but now I'm crying while everyone laughs at me. 
Eventually, I got lucky enough to take Alucard out quickly, and Simon was a pushover by comparison. Moving on to Dracula, and he wasn't nearly as hard. He was actually the easiest boss fight in the game. Very slow to attack, easy to hit, and moves are easy to avoid. Even his second form wasn't much of a challenge. If anything, he just became easier to hit. Getting to the final boss required me to answer some Nintendo trivia. It would have been a pretty neat feature, if I was a nerd and played any Nintendo games. But I don't, so it was more annoying than anything. By the time I finally reached the final boss, Karl Marx, he was also on the easier side for me. Marx's attacks are pretty easy to read, but boy are they a lot faster than the other bosses. If I slowed down for even a second, I'd get hit by his pro-communism propaganda attacks, which would surely destroy me. Thankfully, capitalism always wins, and I conquered Marx in the name of the 1%. Beating the third boss spawns Darkon, allowing me to fight the Dark Nark with all my heart. Darkon is Galim's counterpart, and it has a very similar moveset, but with a couple of changes. Like a machine gun, Darkon gave me the same amount of trouble that Galim did. But this time, I was determined to see it through. That was a mistake, because I almost went insane doing this. Two straight hours of attempts were poured into this boss, sometimes dealing no damage, other times literally being one hit away from winning. It wasn't even that the fight was hard, it was that I was so damn stupid that I kept throwing the fight at the last second. But this time, no difficulty change. Just sweat, tears, and enough pre-workout to kill a small monkey. I had achieved greatness. Beating Darkon makes the whole world explode, and the game splits into half darkness with Darkon and half light with Galim, effectively telling the player, I can be your angle or your devil. To get through the area, you have to reach the end while maintaining the balance between light and dark. To do that, you need to fight both light and dark spirits evenly, and these spirits are no joke. Almost every single fight in this area is as hard as a boss fight. Without spirits, I barely do 3% per hit with Kirby, smash attacks included. I was getting JV3'd more times than a new player at a melee SoCal local. Most of the times I ended up just cheesing them. I also had to beat Crazy Hand and Master Hand several times, because there needed to, uh, uh, let me check my notes here. There needed to open a rift between the realms of light and dark by slapping the ethereal plane really hard. Well, all right then. Master Hand then dives into the rift and fights the entire roster mono e mono. <laughs> Get it? Because mono means hand and spin. You know, whatever. Unfortunately, though, this is where the run ends. See, Master Hand is not Kirby and this run is Kirby only. So, in literal terms, no, you can't beat World of Light with Kirby only. But, we are at the end of the game, so I might as well just show you what happens anyway. Master Hand claps all the smashers and opens up the universe, leaving only two celestial gods and a pink circle that has a face on it. Before I can reach the final fight though, I need to fight every single boss again, back to back, in a gauntlet mode. The only thing that made this possible for me was the fact that I was able to recover health between fights. Beating one boss is hard enough, but beating all of them again back to back? Four hours of legitimate torture later, I managed to finish the gauntlet. But that victory is extremely short-lived because you go right into fighting the final boss. Or should I say bosses, because Galim and Darkon decided to go at it in a triple threat all-out slobber knocker. Surprisingly enough, this fight wasn't terrible. Darkon and Galim can hit each other for big damage so timing my hits and dodging most of the time proved to be the most effective way forward. It did still take about 30 or so attempts, but compared to the gauntlet before it, 
I was more than happy with the result. With Darkon and Galim defeated, the world is restored to its natural order. What does that mean? I don't know, because we've been getting fucked all year regardless. But it does mean that the challenge is complete, and that I'll never have to touch World of Light again. Thanks for watching. I recently finished three challenge runs, so you'll be seeing the next one pretty shortly. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the run. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.